Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. This is Module 8, Kaggle Datasets. Part 1, what is Kaggle? Okay, just like any of these other modules, you have the Helpful Functions section. Make sure that you run that if you want to run any of the examples. I am going to go ahead and um, restart and clear my output. So I'm restarting my kernel. That way I can run everything completely fresh. And there we go. So Kaggle. Kaggle is, you might not have ever heard of Kaggle before, but it is sort of competitive sports for data scientists. Kaggle is a competition website. If you go to Kaggle, and you look at their active competitions, this is date dependent, but right now, during the semester that I recorded this on, this is right when the passenger screening algorithm challenge and the Zillow prize were going on. So look at the prize money on this. This is completely true. If you become, I mean, the top teams in this will split up $1.5 million. In the Zillow challenge, it will be $1.2 million. So this is like the Netflix prize to sort of the next level. And then there are a variety of other um, competitions that individuals are competing on. Usually most of these will be in the neighborhood of $35,000, $50,000. In Kaggle, what you typically are also competing for is if we go to just say one of these, and we look on the leaderboard, these are the individuals. And you can see below them, they've got these badges, uh, pips they call them, uh, that basically define the state how well they're doing. If you've got three of them, you are purple, you're a Kaggle expert. Kaggle master is even better, that is four of those, and um, five of those, you're gold, you are a Kaggle grandmaster. Competing for those ranks, so like if I go to my own page on Kaggle, because Kaggle is a, something of a hobby of mine, I've done three competitions in Kaggle, at least as of the recording of this. I am a competitions expert, so if you find me, I have the purple three um, um, dots under my name. To do that, I had to get two bronze finishes. And that's there, the Quora question pairs and the auto group. So to get any sort of rank on Kaggle, you have to you have to finish in the top 10% or higher. So I've been in the top 10% and the top 7% of, of both of these. So I was 225 out of 3307 people. Uh, if I want to become a the next level up, which is a master, I would need two silvers and a gold. So I've got a little bit of work to do there if I want to. I did enter this competition. This one I didn't just do so well in. And then it also gives me my overall rank. So of the 66,000 people, I'm 2638. So that's the main reason that a lot of people compete in Kaggle. They try to get that elusive sort of Kaggle master um, competition or uh, designation. Kaggle shows you their current um, top users. So these are the people who have ranked the highest. Uh, some of these guys have like 34 gold medals, um, lots of silvers. I find it interesting that some of the top people uh, don't even bother winning uh, bronze medals for some reason. They are just so consistent that they're gold or silver. So let's look at a typical Kaggle competition. Because one of the projects for this, this class, you will compete in a Kaggle in class. So it's a competition that I set up. It's not the full-blown Kaggle, but it's using all of Kaggle software and it's a part of Kaggle that they have set up for universities. A good example of this is the Titanic. So this is a competition that has been running on Kaggle since as long as, Kag as, as, long as I've known about Kaggle. 
The idea here is you try to predict who will survive and who won't from the Titanic, from the real passenger list. And you can see it's got a leaderboard just like any Kaggle competition. There's quite a few people who are scoring perfect 1.0. Um, it probably does not mean that they actually created a perfect algorithm. The answers to who survived Titanic and who did not are published. So you can, you could get a 1.0 score on this just, just with Excel, just get it off of Wikipedia and format it. But that's not the idea. The idea is to try to use their data sets. And it has a training set and a test set. If you download the training set, I'd have to log in. But if you, if you do download the training set, it's basically just individual data on the passengers. And this is what it holds. Did they survive, yes or no? What's their passenger class, ticket, gender, other things? And then try to, try to predict it if they're going to survive or not. Then there's a test set where they have all this information, they just don't have the answer. And you literally fill out the test set so that you have the information um, on, so that you, you can submit it to Kaggle and get a score. You'll do the exact same thing for the assignment in, in class. A typical Kaggle competition has uh, the competition summary page, we saw that, the data page, the evaluation description page, so something like that, it will tell you how you're going to be judged. So Titanic, it's accuracy. What, what percent of the uh, passengers can you correctly determine? Can you get 90% of them? Uh, most of the legitimate algorithms were getting right around 70, 80%, I think is somewhat assumed to be the, is there's a lot of noise in the in the Titanic data set. Certain people who made it to lifeboats for various questionable reasons in some cases. Although in general, um, if you were male, less likely to survive. Female, more likely to survive. If you're female, the next most important thing is your ticket class. Male, it's your age. And this is how a Kaggle competition is scored. And this is important for the assignment. Basically for the assignment, and the assignment changes each semester. So in the class notes, make sure you watch the video for your current semester. I update it every semester, and I also mention it in the, in the weekly update. Um, so you'll, you'll find out what the, what the competition is there and be able to complete it for the current semester. But you get a training data set and a test data set. I, when I created the competition, I created a big master solution file. It has all of the inputs and all of the answers. I then took it and broke it into a training set. So you get the training set with the correct answers and you get the test set without the correct answers and you need to fill in the answers for this. You don't send Kaggle your algorithm. You never send Kaggle your algorithm. You send them, if you win first place, I think you have to, but you fill in your, your Y values, your predictions, and you send it to Kaggle. And Kaggle is going to, um, Kaggle is going to give you a, public leaderboard rank. So you will be in, you will be ranked with your fellow classmates. And there's a private one. The private one is not revealed until the very end. So just to show you how that works, this is the Kaggle Auto Group Challenge. This is one of the ones that I, this is the first Kaggle that I ever competed in. If you look on the leaderboard, uh, it shows you the people that won. Now, if you pay attention to the individuals here, you'll see that um, uh, you'll see that we can go to the pri this is the private leaderboard. This is what was announced at the end. This is what matters. The public leaderboard is 
the part of the data set that you're being evaluated at the beginning. Now notice who these are. They're basically the same pre people. That group that has the little emoticon, they moved, but it's largely the same. Sometimes the Kaggle data sets are set, set up such that it's very, there'll be a very large shakeup. The Kaggle competition that I showed you a little bit earlier when we were looking at mine, the Mercedes challenge was one of those like that. So this is the Mercedes-Benz one. Um, if you look at the leaderboard, first of all, see these big green numbers. There were people who on the last day of the competition, when they switched to the private, jumped up like 1,400. You see stuff like that. This was a major upset one. If you look at the public leaderboard, so this was it going in, notice just about everybody, so the people who were in the top positions, literally got shot down 26, 740, um, all of these. Let's see, where was I in the final one? So yeah, this one I entered, tried a few times, and I realized the data were such that there would be a big shakeup. So I didn't, I actually quit pretty early on, even though I was pretty highly ranked, got pushed to 177 in the public, and then I was part of the shakeup that just fell um, considerably. The class, I will not do a shakeup like that. In this case, the data were just too small and practically unpredictable, which is why I started on this one and, and abandoned it. But it was an interesting competition um, nonetheless. But it's very rare in Kaggle that literally nobody even from the top 30 before the private set is revealed, was even in the competition at the uh, at the very end. So this is this is this is a good example of where there were a lot of outliers in there, and it was very difficult. It became almost a lottery. I for a while had position two, but it was not because of any skill in my algorithm. It was simply because I got the outliers predicted in a fairly consistent. Uh, way to the uh, to the public leaderboard, but not the private. So this this was a interesting um, interesting Kaggle. I'll show you some other Kaggles that um, I found interesting and have worked with in the um, in the insurance industry because Kaggle datasets you will frequently see them used um, in con used for sample. Uh, sample data. The auto group I competed in, I, I mentioned that one. Galaxy Zoo was pretty interesting. This is one where you tried to predict the type of galaxy. What was particularly interesting about this is a lot of astrophysicists entered, but it was it turned out to be straight machine learning that um, uh, that won this one. There are quite a few image recognition ones, the Galaxy Zoo, for example. There is the, um, this was a pretty funny one, um, cats versus dogs. Can you tell the difference between a picture of a cat and a dog? Can your machine learning algorithm do that? The diabetic retinopathy was pretty interesting. Can you detect if this person has diabetes from a retinopathy. Life insurance companies like, like I work for would be very interested in perfecting that technology. Another insurance one, the State Farm Distracted Driver Challenge. They have all sorts of pictures of people in the cars doing all kinds of bizarre things. Um, some are even driving, but the idea is to detect how distracted a individual driver might be. The idea is, and this is a State Farm challenge, is perhaps you would be able to uh, detect and determine people's premiums for that. Okay, so this is the uh, end of this part. The next part will show some code that, will be, that might be helpful for the uh, assignment. And then there'll be a, an, 
a uh, part that will be added each semester that describes the specific Kaggle in-class competition that you are competing with. 